Medical management of thyroid eye disease involves the use of drops, tablets and intravenous drips. If, after your initial consultation, your diagnosis is for medical management, the doctor will prescribe either tablets or drops and a return appointment will be made to assess their effectiveness. For the uh, patients who have mild disease, all they require are generally lubricants and I generally recommend that those lubricants are preservative-free because if the drops are being used frequently then you can get a, into a problem with preservative toxicity. Um, patients who have a little bit more swelling off, the, particularly off the white of the eye, the chemosis, um, will benefit from antihistamines and uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as Proben in combination um, with the lubricant drops. But when we move on to patients whose disease is more severe, uh, then we were probably talking about starting systemic steroids, which are really the, the mainstay of treatment. Steroids uh, is the most effective treatment for uh, thyroid eye disease, and that's been shown in studies. Oral steroids work within a few days, two, three, four days, certainly within a week or so. And what we normally do when we give steroids orally um, is that we'll review them in one to two weeks time and by then you should have a response to treatment. So the patient should feel that they've improved and we should be able to measure their improvement as well. Well the first thing we need to establish is whether the condition is reversible and generally I would prescribe a, a trial of high dose steroids to see if the condition reverses. I would see the patient at a week and see if the patient has noticed um, subjective changes and particularly if I can measure objective changes in terms of the how far the eyes are coming forward or how wide the, the lids are open and uh, what the surface is like on the eyes and if there has been um, any optic neuropathy whether um, that has improved as well. Uh, and if the trial of high dose steroids has been successful then I will either continue on steroid uh, at a lower dose or offer one of the other immunosuppressants such as cyclosporin or tacrolimus. If you are prescribed drops or either steroidal or non-steroidal tablets you can take these away and self-administer the treatment at home but it is vitally important you take the medicine as prescribed and complete the full course given to you. Should your consultant, with your consent, decide giving you intravenous steroids using a drip would be the best course of treatment, the hospital will arrange for you to be admitted as an outpatient once a week for three or four weeks. Intravenous steroids works even more quickly and sometimes you get a response in one or two days uh, and again you'll see that the patient will feel they've improved and also um, in some cases um, uh, you can see that their um, uh, parameters changing, such as their vision improving or less swelling. In terms of duration of steroid treatment, initially uh, everyone would get at least a six week uh, treatment course, um, whether that be oral steroids or intravenous steroids. Following that you then titrate it against the patient's response. So typically patients may be on a lower dose steroid for three months and occasionally up to six months uh, with a very low dose. Uh, but with a higher dose, it's usually only for about two months, six weeks to two months. And then you uh, taper off the dose within three months, but occasionally it's six months. Non-steroidal and steroidal treatments are usually given while your thyroid eye disease is in the active stage. Unless there is an urgent need, your consultant will wait until the disease has become dormant to assess whether subsequent surgery is required. Sometimes the um, improvement with the immunosuppression is, is sufficient so that no surgery is necessary or sometimes just a minor lid correction rather than anything else. Um, th this is the whole point of using the immunosuppression early is, is to minimise what needs to be done at the end of the day. For the vast majority of patients, there are few or no side effects from steroidal treatment. But it is important to be aware of possible problems with the use of both intravenous and oral steroids. So the side effects are related to the length of steroid use and the dose of steroid use. And we tend to use a high dose initially and then reduce it quite quickly. 
The most common um, side effects of steroids initially is it can give you sleep disturbance, mood changes, it can make you low or it can make you high. Um, the other changes um, can be that it can change your blood pressure and can cause a high blood pressure, especially if you're prone to it. Similarly, it can induce diabetes or sugar in, in, in your urine, and again, uh, if you're prone to that as well. Other side effects uh, include increased risk of getting infection, which is fairly unusual, but possible, um, uh, as well as uh, weight gain, uh, and also change in fat distribution around the body. So some people get fat around the face as well as generally uh, increasing uh, weight uh, as well. I also have to advise patients who are on these drugs that there is a long-term risk of malignancy of the um, uh, of white cells called lymphoma. The risk is small and that there is a lot of data um, available because these drugs have been used for quite a while in uh, patients who are on kidney transplant. So there's a, there is a lot of data available. Um, and the risk appears to be at around 1 in 10,000 to 1 in 1,000 of lymphoma. But that, that data comes from long-term use. Uh, there is also a risk of skin cancer, which is particularly squamous cell carcinoma. And so I advise patients to uh, use a high factor sun cream on all exposed areas, to not use sun beds and to also make sure that somebody checks their back because obviously you can monitor your, your own um, front surface but not the back, so that, that's very important. It's also important to advise that if a patient is on the oral contraceptive pill for example that may not be fully effective and a barrier method uh, should be used there have been pregnancies on tacrolimus without any particular problem, but in, in, in general it's a good idea to avoid pregnancy for the duration of the immunosuppression treatment. One of the other common side effects with long-term dose, uh, long -term, uh, steroids um, is thinning of the bone, uh, because steroids change the metabolism of how the bone uh, is metabolised. Um, but that's why we tend to give drugs to um, counter that uh, as well. In terms of intravenous steroids, the side effects tend to be a little less in terms of long term, but um, they have to be administered very carefully and we administer uh, intravenous steroids, so that's steroids in the vein, in hospital. So what would happen is that you'd come in, you'd stay a minimum at your first visit for about four hours where certain checks are done, such as uh, blood pressure and urine to check um, for, for sugar. Then you have to have a little cannula in your uh, vein and a drip is set up where um, the steroid is given over a period of about one hour. And then we monitor things like blood pressure for a few hours to make sure it hasn't changed acutely. And if all is well, then you can go. And then on subsequent treatments with the intravenous steroids, um, you stay here a little bit uh, less time. And the intravenous steroids um, can either be given roughly weekly. So we tend to give it weekly for about six weeks, although some patients will get two doses, depending on the severity, in, in the first week. We um, tell patients not to stop their steroids uh, suddenly, especially the longer you've been on it, your body gets used to it and you produce your own steroids and it affects the balance. Therefore, if you suddenly stop the steroids and the balance goes out of kilter, then you might become unwell. So we tend to taper off steroids. Um, so you might start at 80 milligrams and you go down to 70, 60, 50, 40, and that's done over a period of weeks. So you should never stop steroids without discussing it with your GP or, or the clinician who's treating you. So it's important that uh, before you stop steroids, it's, it's discussed and normally we reduce the dose uh, over a period of weeks. Generally speaking, success for treating patients can range anything from 50% to about 80% and studies have shown that, especially with steroids, uh, oral steroids and intravenous steroids. And that tends to mean that uh, half to three quarters of patients will improve with treatment. That is slightly confounded by the fact that some patients would improve anyway, even if they didn't have treatment. But, but uh, most patients do improve with treatment. And a small group of patients who don't improve with treatment then go on to have uh, a different form of treatment that may be more aggressive treatment.